I am now at one of the offices of Domestic Violence Solutions of Santa Barbara with Executive Director Beverly Engel. How are you? Good, how are you? It's a pleasure to have you in our show. And Beverly, I would like to start by asking you, what's the mission of Domestic Violence Solutions? Well, our main mission is to break the intergenerational cycle of abuse. And that means that we want to serve the women who are being abused, but we also want to help prevent domestic violence in the future. What's the background of Domestic Violence Solutions in Santa Barbara? It started in about 1974 uh, with just a shelter for battered women. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there was, there was no other shelter in the county, and there was no other help for, for battered women at all, so it was really needed. How many people do you help per year? Well, last year we, we, we served 300 women in the shelter, women and children, who actually lived in the shelters. We have three shelters, one in Santa Barbara, one in Santa Maria, and one in Lompoc. Mm -hmm. And so we served over 300 women and children. We served over 3,000 people in terms of our crisis line. Over 3,000 people called for information, for referrals, just to talk to a counselor, to get some help. Tell me more about this uh, emergency shelter program. Well, the emergency shelter program is our main, it's our main focus, of course, because that uh, women who call us on the crisis line often have no other place to go. Abusers often want to isolate a woman and mm -hmm. not, they don't allow her to be with her family or mm -hmm. her friends. And so when she does finally decide to leave, sometimes she has nowhere to go. Uh, her family and friends may be really tired of the situation because they thought she should leave a long time ago. Or her family may encourage her to stay with him. So often they don't have any place to go, and we have people usually who don't have enough money to get a hotel or get an apartment. So we really serve the, the poorer people in the community. I see. Um, and so they get to come with their children and get counseling. Uh, we help them um, with their legal papers, with getting restraining orders. With women who are, who are not legal, we help them with immigration issues. Um, we help them to create a plan for what they're going to do next. Mm -hmm. So we offer a lot more than housing, but housing is our primary focus. And that's during 45 days, yes. I understand. Yes. And after that, what happens? After that, um, some of them have someplace else to go. Some mm -hmm. of them relocate. Some of them go back home. Not that many, but some do. And then, as I said, some are qualified to go on and stay for 18 months in our transitional housing. We want to make sure it's somebody who's really going to take advantage of it. They're going to go back to school, get job training. Uh, they're going to get counseling for their children. They're going to really use our, all our facilities so that in 18 months, they really can get a new start in life. Now, you mentioned you have a hotline yes. for crisis. But also, I heard about uh, the domestic, domestic violence. Uh, I think it's called emergency respond team, yes, right? Divert. Yes, yes. Uh, what's the difference? Well, the crisis line is a 24-hour line where, again, women can just get information, get a little bit of counseling. The divert line is whenever the police receive a 911 call, mm -hmm. they call us automatically, and, and we send an advocate out with the police to talk to the women, actually in her home. So it's a support for her. Yeah. The police are trained to talk to the women in a good way about domestic violence, but it just feels better to them if they have a female support system. Uh, and somebody who has information about domestic violence right there on the scene. Now, what about counseling and training services? We provide counseling to all the women who come to the shelter and to the second stage housing. Mm -hmm. And when they're in the shelter, it's, it's really kind of emergency counseling. It's, um, you know, dealing with the current d domestic violence issue. It may be helping the child who was also witnessing the abuse to kind of get over the trauma. Mm -hmm. But in the second stage housing, we really go more in depth into a deeper kind of counseling. Um, we have a, a treatment program for what's called complex trauma. The women who've been abused recently in a domestic violence way almost always have a history of having been abused as a child. And we find that unless we help them recover from the childhood abuse, which actually may have caused them to be attracted to an abuser or to stay with an abuser because they're used to it, mm -hmm. and there's a lot more to it, they, they have depression, they have anxiety, they have low self-esteem. It's a very complex issue helping them to recover from all of that. Um, so in that 18 months, we really do a very intense counseling program with them. Now, how do you prevent these topics to happen? Do you educate teenagers or yeah, we have schools? A, we have a teen services program mm -hmm. uh, here in Santa Barbara and in North County. Um, we have two different advocates who go out to the high schools talk to kids about what are healthy relationships, what are the red flags to tell you if you're in an abusive relationship. Okay. Um, we educate the boys too about, you know, why would you 
be wanting to control her and put her down and be critical of her. And we're finding that we thought that going to high schools was going to be a really good way to prevent abuse, but we're finding out the kids in the high school are already in domestic violence situations. So we're actually thinking about going into junior high to try to prevent it. But it does help a lot. We get young girls come to us uh, when these teen advocates are there and they come and they say, I'm being abused and I didn't know what I could do. I didn't know there was a shelter. I didn't know there was a counselor. And so it's really helping a lot. Now, I understand that there is a very interesting group called Men Against Domestic Violence. Yes, yes. How can people get involved? Uh, it was more active in the past. We're trying to, to kind of reignite it. And mm -hmm. if they want to call our main line, which is 963-4458, and they can ask for me, Beverly Engel, mm -hmm. um, I will talk to them more about, the, about that program. And, and maybe they can help us get it going even stronger than it was before. And how can other people volunteer for you? Your they can call that 963-4458 number, and uh, I'm acting right now as the volunteer coordinator, mm -hmm. so they can ask for me again, uh, and we have all kinds of ways for people to volunteer. The main number is 963-4458. Mm -hmm. The hotline number, the crisis line number, is 964-5245, and the website is www.dvsolutions.org. Well, thank you, Beverly. Well, thank All that you. information is so, so precious. And I know a lot of people, sometimes they are afraid to make that call, yes, but yes. there are always solutions to any problem. Yes, right? yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being our show. Okay, thank you. For more information on the Nonprofit Spotlight, check our website at www.spchannels.tv or call 963-3893. If you'd like your nonprofit featured in a future nonprofit spotlight, contact us at the information on your screen.